Thanks for taking time to listen to this episode of The Real Rescue Podcast. Take a minute to go to therealrescue.com to check out these and other great deals from our sponsors here at The Real Rescue. This episode of The Real Rescue Podcast is brought to you by Breeze Eastern, the world's only dedicated helicopter hoist and winch provider. Axness, because when lives are at stake and conditions are challenging, clear communication is of the utmost importance. Life Saving Systems Corporation. We do our work so you can do yours. Tough gear for tough jobs. And SR3 Rescue Concepts, because you don't know what you don't know. Breeze Eastern. They dedicate themselves to our helicopter rescue world. Since the very first helicopter rescue in November of 1945, Breeze Eastern has designed and manufactured superior rescue hoist solutions. While much of the technology and the unique mission requirements have changed over the past 75 years, their commitment to the rescuers, the operators, and those being rescued has not. Contact them today by visiting them at breeze-eastern.com. The Axness PNG Wireless ICS System can bring cutting-edge wireless intercommunication system technology to any aircraft. The PNG system can be fully integrated into an existing ICS system or can be carried on and off as a mobile base station. They can go anywhere, at any time, on any aircraft. Plus, with the strongest and most robust waterproof handheld on the market, this system can take a hit and keep working. Their wireless intercom systems are designed to enhance situational awareness through improved communication capability. This system brings superior noise canceling technology to eliminate rotor wash and engine noise from your ICS. The Axness PNG wireless system is currently deployed in more than 1,800 public safety, air ambulance, and search and rescue aircraft worldwide. I have personally used the Axness system in four different countries and on five different airframes. It is awesome. If you want more information, contact them today at axness.com. That's A-X-N-E-S dot com. You just make sure you tell them Quinny sent me. Life Saving Systems Corporation. They manufacture the world's toughest helicopter rescue gear. From my favorite harness as a rescueman, the Triton harness, to the rescue baskets, the litters, and of course, the most popular hook in all helicopters, the D-Lock. The team at LSE will cut bend, sew, weld, and machine these products into existence every day. We do our work so you can do yours. LSC, tough gear for tough jobs. Check them out today at lifesavingsystems.com and follow them on Instagram at Rescue Gear. That's at R-E-S-Q-G-E-A-R. And SR3 Rescue Concepts is a training company that can help with your helicopter training, a standardization and safety check, or maybe just an audit or an FAA refresher. They are here to bring your agency up to date with the most current techniques, rules, regulations, and equipment. The training staff is awesome. With a certified flight instructor pilots, experienced crew members, which I am happy to say that I am one of them, they offer training in rescue, medical, tactical, firefighting, ground operations, and night vision goggle use. SR3 has also partnered with Petzl to assist with personal protective equipment and the highly specific Lazard. SR3 also goes beyond the helicopter world as they provide high angle rescue training and tactical medicine training. Contact them today at sr3rescueconcepts.com or over on Instagram at sr3 underscore rescue. In this episode, I'm totally stoked to have this guy come on. And one of my favorite parts about this entire conversation is the idea of driving forward. You know, like somebody tells you, no, you can't do it. And there's other ways to get it done. And that's exactly what he did. So as a hoist operator, winchman coming to us from Holland, please welcome Mr. Danny Heuschman. My name is Jason Quinn. I am United States Coast Guard Rescue Swimmer number 500. 
These are my rescues and rescues from those of us that put our lives on the line every day so others may live. This is The Real Rescue Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Real Rescue. Today I've got with me from Holland, Danny Heushman. Did I say that right? Yeah, it's almost almost perfect. It's almost good? Yeah. One more time. Danny Heushman. Heushman. Yes, that's almost good. Oh, it's terrible. (laughs) Danny, welcome to the show, man. I'm glad you (laughs) came back. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So what's cool about this is, uh, so you and I have connected uh, on and off for a little while now, but you've you have a very interesting story as far as who you're working with now, how you got into all this stuff. And, and I, I'm psyched to have it, but in all reality, you've only really been hoisting for like four years. Only four years. That's correct. Yeah. I'm a rookie. It's, you're right. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> well, with the stories you're about to well, share. Yeah. 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 Some of the spots that you're putting guys in on, on some ships and stuff is ridiculous. And I'm really excited to get into some of these stories, but, uh, before we do that, man, Danny, give us a little background, brother. Like, how did you get going into all this and everything you're doing? Yeah, I have to go back to the uh, to the Air Force, actually. I started with the Air Force in 2008, and I worked down south, um, where I was an aviation fuel technician. So uh, uh, doing that, I was working with the uh, Puma, which we call the Cougar, yeah. and, then we, <laughs> and we had uh, the Chinooks and the uh, Longbow Apaches that we were working there. So we were a lot of uh, on, on trainings and uh, and doing deployments and stuff. Uh, even been to uh, Afghanistan back then. Nice. Yeah, a really really nice time. So uh, learned a lot back there. And then they transferred me to the Koi in Den Helder, and that's like a search rescue base. It was it was back then still a search res- uh, rescue base for the Navy. I have I have no idea where that is. Not a clue. Yeah, it's it's like uh, the the northern part of Holland. So on the on the west okay. northern part of Holland, that's like a strategic part for search rescue. You can oh. you can cover the whole coastline from there. Oh, nice. Okay. So that was yeah. That, Sorry, that, my was... geography is not <laughs> Holland related. <laughs> I understand. No problem with that. I okay. can tell you that. <laughs> hey, at least, at least I'm honest. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right. So there you are, like centrally located around everything. Search yeah, and rescue so, for everything. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So I started my career in, in Gilzerai, and that was down south. And then they, 2011, it was already, they transferred into the Koi. And that's where I got the real taste of it, because that's where we're doing a search and rescue. Ooh. So I was an aviation fuel technician, and uh, we also had the peeper. Before they had a, a call out, we had to go on shift and uh, like refuel the helicopter, uh, help the, the uh, emergency physician to get in and out of the helicopter, uh, dragging those SAR cases with them. So they'd like these suitcases with SAR uh, equipment and med- yeah. medicine. So we were like uh, doing all this stuff and I was really get the taste of it. And I said, oh man, I would want to do that. That's awesome. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I was on the flight line looking at those guys going in and out. I, said, oh, I want to go there. I want to be that one. <laughs> so I, I went up to the office. I said, hey, I'm, I'm now here as a field technician, but actually, I want to do that. And he, he came up to me and said, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, me? Yeah, damn me. it. <laughs> Come on, so, so, sir. Yeah, yeah so, well, yeah, yeah. In, in that time, you needed to be an, uh, an engineer more than, than, uh, than you had a medical, uh, medical knowledge. Yep. So they said, you need to go to engineering school. So I did that. I did have a me- mechanical engineering, a four years degree of that. And then it all changed. Within that time, I was doing my study. I trained a lot with those rescue swimmer guys. But they said, yeah, well, we're going to lose it. We're gonna, it's going to be privatized. So the, the military will not do the, the search rescue anymore. Oh. So my whole dream collapsed, actually. At that, at that point, I said, oh, man, it's, it's going to be civil. And I didn't wow. have any experience or whatsoever to, to go into a civil avi- aviation on that matter. So they said, okay, yeah, that's a busted dream, basically. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. So I said, so, okay, well. I, I didn't, uh, hold on, I didn't realize that. So Holland, like, got rid of all search and rescue from the military and civilianized it. It's so correct. It's, it's, yeah. Is it Bristow that's taking it right now? Uh, they will uh, take it in uh, November this year, but it's still run by NSV. So oh, uh, run by who? Uh, NHV. It's the Belgian NHV. Uh, company. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They were they run it from 2050 uh, until until now, uh, November. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
So you're in, you're in the military. They're like, I want to be in search and rescue. And they're like, no, <laughs> it's all civilian eyes. And you're like, oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in the civilian way, it's better to have medical papers than, uh, than uh, be an engineer because they don't have really, like, that board mechanics anymore. You know, that was in the early days ahead. But nowadays, it's all, uh, um, you know, the, the technicians on ground do everything. Yeah. And on board, the winch operator and the winch, uh, winchman, they yep. have all medical uh, qualifications. Right. Which I didn't have, of course. So, <laughs> you had your mechanical degree. That's yes, what you were told to get. Yes, that was it. That was it. But anyway, it, it was a great study and, and it was a good uh, uh, yeah, way to, to, to progress within the military. But uh, then I said, yeah, well, let me be a load master then. Well, if you want to be a load master, they said, you have to go out of service, quit your job and go all in again. Go all do the test stuff and, 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 and hope for the best. Because you're a little bit older <laughs> than most guys who come in. Oh. I said, damn it, I have a wife, I have a kid now, I have a mortgage to pay. Yeah. I just don't feel like leaving the service, don't get paid anymore, and then try to get in. So uh, can I do it other ways? And I said, no, well, no, it's really for the new guys, this job. So uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot join from within the military. And was, that was that uh, was that was that was not nice. So um, you're getting roadblocks left and right. Holy yeah, cow! I okay, did. it was like a, a, a rough, a rough uh, period because I had like uh, my coach, my my, uh, my coach within the military said, "Oh man, I would like to have you on the job. Let's go for it." And and we tried a lot, but then it, it didn't work out. So uh, I said, "You know what? I'm gonna do as much as training as I can with my network that I have within the military, and then uh, try to get out anyway." Okay. So I went from there, I went uh, to Priority One Air Rescue in France. Mm -hmm. They had like a, a simulator back then in, in Nimes. Yes, I know, you know Nimes. I've been yeah, to no. Nimes. I was there. Nîmes. Yes. <laughs> they had a beautiful awesome. facility yeah. there. I actually really liked yeah. it. Was, yeah, simulator was in Run Run. The tower was out in the main bay. Yeah, yeah I, I believe they have now in Bordeaux. I yes, think. yeah, it all got moved to Bordeaux. So when it was in Nîmes, just for the record, the big wall that was there, yeah, the Great Wall of Nîmes, yeah, yeah. myself, Lenny Cunningham, yeah, we built that. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I, I, I feel sorry for the guys in the podcast now because I'm going to show you, I'm going to drop you some pictures on them. That, on that oh, stuff. I'm so excited. <laughs> I will send you pictures back because I, yeah, I will show cool. you us like lifting the wall up. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a blast. Oh, so it's... You, maybe you might remember this one. Oh yeah, absolutely love that. <laughs> it was so, a tower where we, where we do this with we, we did, we did that stuff, you know. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's where I got like the, the uh, app initio training from uh, from my instructor, which I had a really good uh, uh, connection with. Because I said, yeah, I would like to get you on the spot. So what we do, we get you into uh, like a, as an app initio, we get you to chair flying. We do some chair flying, and on the ground, we're going to explain the uh, force my shelling stuff, like from the basic on, and then uh, from there, on, we, we go up to the simulator. So that's how we did. I trained with the uh, rescue swimmers on the ground on a tower I just, just showed you. It's like, yep. uh, for the guys on the podcast, it's like a mock-up. It's like uh, they, made, they made, like, the door of the Puma with the winch system on it, and yep. then uh, you, uh, it's, I think it's three meters, four meters high. Uh, yeah, three, three to four meters. Let's call it yeah, four okay. meters. It's, yeah, it's, that's like, yeah. like a static winch. Yeah, you can do some training stuff. 12 so, feet uh, off the ground. I think it's actually, uh, it goes to about five meters when you get to the top of the hoist off the top of my head. So it's about yeah, 15 feet. Bring, yeah, bring it in and out of the simulated cabin. Yes, it's, the it's, cabin. Yeah, killer setup. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, it was good with the, with the fall arrests and stuff in it and, yeah. and, the, and the real wind system. So that was really cool. So yeah. I started working with that stuff at uh, the training and then uh, in the end in the simulator and, and passed all of that. And then they uh, it went back to the military. Like, hey, this guy just showed up here. And he actually made it for some reason. <laughs> and it was, yeah, this is a high ranked officer said, no, no, he has to go out of service and go back in and try it there from there. So I said, oh, man, there we go again. Uh, but back then I had, of course, um, some network also with pilots who went out of service because they didn't do search rescue anymore. You know, it's from the Air Force. It's like, yeah. it's like the Air Force and the Navy combined their search rescue tasks. And, uh, well, that ended in 2015, and those pilots went somewhere else. I mean, a couple of them. And one of them was working for a helicopter travel Munich, uh, uh, ACM in short. And okay. he said, hey, man, uh, how, we need some hoist operators. Uh, would you be interested? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
course I would be. So uh, I went there and, and, and straight away got the job, actually. I had like the, the minor qualifications to get in. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we, we're going to give it a try. And, and, and from there, my career started, actually. Just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know what? You kept pushing forward. You, you didn't take no for an answer. I, I didn't quit. Yeah, I right. like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Get out of my way. Poof, kicking doors in. <laughs> Try another door then. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if one doesn't work, don't quit. Try another one. Yeah. Hey, you yeah, know what? My, my buddy Andrew Yost and I would always say, uh, no is just a yes to another question. Just throw that. <laughs> no? Yeah, no. Uh, like what if I ask it this way? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, that was that was cool. I did my basic training there uh, on the ground, and then and then uh, straight away flying, already after a couple of weeks. And then it was for wind farm hoisting, so it's kind of really static, but you learn the basics right. uh, to work with the winch and uh, safety stuff, of course, for the cabin, going in and out of of uh, personal, uh, human external cargo, as we call them. Right. Yep. 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 So uh, class D operations, huh? <laughs> yeah, and, and made a lot of cycles because on those wind farms you you made so many cycles. I, I believe we had over the day I made uh, eighty cycles at one day. Eighty cycles 80 in a day in a wind farm. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, so everybody out there, just to make sure we're on the same page, a cycle is when the hoist cable leaves the drum of the hoist, yeah. goes out, and then goes back to the drum. That is one. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? That's make what sure we're, we're on the same that. page. Yeah. yeah. 80. That's it. Yeah, we, uh, we, had, we had those technician classes. So we, uh, we did the classes as well. So uh, learn the technicians who will go out of, to the wind farms. Yeah. The and wind and farms, so we, and you're talking all of Holland or Germany or both? Or? Germany. Yeah, Germany. I was working in okay. Germany with, uh, with ACM, and uh, those wind farms are all located in the German Bight. Yeah. So uh, on the North Sea, of course. This and, is where uh, you are a little bit of a competitor to uh, our boy Simon over there working with Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Simon. Where are you yeah, at? Cre credits to Simon. Hi, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I am. So uh, I, I, I was, I would say, uh, from ACM then. And uh, yeah, so we went in and out wind, uh, wind farms. And we did trainings on a, on a training tower as well, close to our airbase, where we were uh, yeah, training those technician guys who went, uh, servicing, uh, went out servicing those wind, wind mills, wind farms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, we did trainings with those guys. So you already make a lot of uh, hoist cycles with them, and then in the later in the afternoon you go out and then uh, you, you finish the job there. So it was really nice. I did it one and a half years. Uh, yeah, made a lot of uh, wind cycles. Uh, learned a lot about uh, yeah a a airmanship, uh, basic uh, aviation crew, yeah, uh, winch operator st stuff. You know, from there. So that that was the beginning actually. And then I got a message from uh, uh, a Dutch guy who works with, uh, with Northern. And he said, well, we need a guy. Would you be interested? I said, oh, yeah. That's him. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's where I would like to go. So, uh, yes, sign me up. Which, and, yeah, which brings you to your very first, like, case, we're going to call it, with Hems. So you went from wind farm into uh, Hems, and that's the helicopter EMS. Yeah. And you get your first case there, didn't you? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, um, <laughs> I, I started with Northern, and I thought, well, I, I I'm now a hoist operator, so I'm capable of doing it. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got my training, I got my training, and I said, oh man, I have to start all over again. It was oh man, and and they said, oh yeah, we have to. No, not you're not an avid issue. You know how a winch works. You know how a little bit of uh, basic air crewman stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you have it, but but. Yeah, you so yeah, passed the acceptancy flight, but that was it. I had to go out in training and I had a, a three full months of, of, yeah, really rough training, I would say. Three months, three months, yeah. Wow, yeah, you know what? Props to the company and, and for you for going through that really? training. That's much needed, and, and I, I don't think there's enough emphasis put on how much training actually goes into hoist operators and what you have to do to be a good efficient and well-rounded hoist operator or winch yes. operator for you guys. Sorry. Winch hoist. Same. That's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> a winch is Three a hoist, right? months. Wow. Good. Yeah, I mean, good. You go from, from static stuff. So like a windmill or a wind farm. Yeah. And, and, and you go to uh, uh, dynamic stuff. So to ships, 
uh, water rescues, high line, stretchy stuff, you know, all, all the things that come to it. I thought, oh man, I have to start all over again. And I, I had to. Yeah. But three months was actually quite quick because I released, uh, I started in September. The first of September, and they released me at seven December, as I as far as I remember. Yeah, that's, per- that's good. That's good. Yeah. So I was flying on the supervision, going to my first Hems case from here. And um, actually, to be honest, I was not quite sure what my first Hems case was because <laughs> it was a straightforward right. flight. I mean, we have a lot of flights. Sometimes we fly. Uh, uh, we have like a six days rotation shift. Okay. And uh, we fly sometimes ten. 10 patients because we do uh, uh, onshore stuff as well, you know? So that's yeah. why we have a lot of cases. So this was like a straightforward case to the island of Silt in, in Germany. And we transferred an, uh, an elderly woman to, to the hospital. That was actually my first uh, ham skate. I could be on. I was not released yet for hoisting. Oh. So how they did it, so that okay, you can go in this case and they need to go back. If you have a hoist case, you need to go back for refuel anyway. And then my uh, supervisor and my trainer would step in and he would do that. Gotcha. And that happened. He had did a, you did it really? Had, yeah, it ha- I had, we, on that case, not, but a couple of days later, I was still on shift and we had an, uh, a hams case and when I went on. And then uh, the beeper went, yeah, we got a hoist case and we, went the, we were in the hospital, so we needed to go for a refuel, which was close to our airfield. So we did the refuel. I had to step out and he stepped in and it was a really nice special to hoist on it was like ah, yeah, i'm so oh. close i'm this close yes, so- <laughs> oh man yeah gotta get and qualified the, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the no, seventh, the seventh wait, of the on, i gotta tell you a little story side story this is funny Sorry, yeah so i'm getting qualified to be rescue swimmer stuff and something similar happened to me where the alarms are going off and this and anything and i'm watching some of the guys lead you know get all their gear together, get ready to go on their flights. And one of my buddies looks at me, he's like, you jealous? I was like, yeah, you little, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, good, go get qualified. And then walked out. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, exactly. Screw you too. Go, <laughs> go save a life, all right? <laughs> anyway, I feel your pain right there. That's what I'm trying to get to. I understand and feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, especially when I mean, you know, you're not getting to get that many hoist uh, hoist jobs. You know that they are uh, they are not rare, but they're also not like every day. Yeah, I, so, I equate uh, them to about thirty to forty percent of all of our rescue stuff that we do is yes. a hoist case. Other than that, the rest of it's either landing or light on wheels, skid, something to that effect. So yeah, yeah, it's like you're flying to a ship and they said it might be hoisting, so you're all prepared and all ready to go, and then yeah. it has a big landing spot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Lower down, boom, land, <laughs> done. Like, oh, yes. well, that was easy. Yeah. So, so uh, I got qualified uh, completely at the 7th of December, and on the end of that month, um, I think just before Christmas, somewhere like that, yeah. I got my first hoist job. Oh, oh I mean, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm all excited for you right now. Alarm goes <laughs> off, tones Alarm drop. Yes, voice is, case. Oh, <laughs> what do you got? So I had a couple of hams cases before. I said, oh, a new case. I'm, you know, really fresh and young. Oh, really hyped up. Let's let's go. And I said, it's a hoist case. Okay. Oh, now I need to be calm. Get my equipment and get my stuff together before I go on this job. And and, and I did it. And it was uh, it was a really nice job. It was a supply vessel. Uh, just outside of the wind farm and um, it had a guy who had an eye injury and we needed to airlift him off but you know those yellow dots as we call them those hoist yes. spots yep uh, th- it was completely packed with containers and trains oh. and stuff so it was even a challenging uh, i mean the weather conditions were nice but as the ship itself for a rookie like me was quite uh it's quite a challenge because we needed to conduct a high hoist <laughs> precision hoisting my friend precision yes, hoisting <laughs> so we, we could find a spot uh i think port side off somewhere off the ship and then we went uh over 100 feet it was a 100 uh, foot hoist Woo. yeah 100 foot hoist so come on rookie <laughs> well done that's <laughs> awesome so the, the guy said, let's do it quick and dirty. So get the rescue swimmer down, get them in the rescue seat, and then uh, get them up. Because the emergency physician goes always, uh, well, let's go back. I need to tell this because uh, we have a little bit different setup. 
Okay. Uh, mo most star units like use the uh, rescue swimmer and then like wrap the guy up and then the uh, hoist them off and then get them uh, stable in the helicopter. I mean, that's a lot, a lot of search and rescue service are doing it like that. But we have a different setup. We have an emergency physician on board. So what we do is we get those guys uh, together on the ship and there, or a platform or something. And that's where we stabilize the patients there. So okay. if they need to intubate a, a, a patient, they do it on the on scene. Yeah. That, so and that's what I do yeah. currently. Like we stabilize patient on location and yeah. then hoist. Yeah. yeah. So that's a different setup, uh, but uh, that's how, uh, how not it works. Um, so, but in this case, it was uh, only an eye injury and it was not even that bad. So the emergency physician said, okay, then I stay here. Uh, you do the conductor hoist and then uh, you add them off. And that went fine, but nice. Yeah. So Perfect. I was really, really excited. You know, you know this feeling. <laughs> so I actually, I'm, I'm more intrigued, like when you got back to base, because now it's over and done with, you know, patient's gone. Were you all like you know Jones in for like the next two days? Yeah, really. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm already an ADHD guy, so already bouncing around quite a lot. <laughs> but then oh, even dude, more, you I know. Love it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah good for you. Nice. So the whole crew is happy. So yeah, good to go now. Perfect. Yeah, everybody's happy. Everybody's good. Everybody knows you're qualified. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, dump a bucket of water over your head. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Oh, uh, all right. Well, now let's get let's keep it rolling because now I'm all excited. So yeah, you, no. you got your first one. Now, now you got a couple more that kind of went a little sideways and and really uh really put you into a, 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 a how do I want to say this? Like a, you worked hard. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. So uh, the second case was, was quite interesting. I mean, we had a lot of hoist cases in, in between, uh, but those were like and platforms and stuff and uh, more straightforward jobs, I would say. Uh, also really nice, but not really interesting to talk about maybe. Okay. But the, uh, the one uh, next is, is also a fishing vessel uh, in the Dutch sector. So we get the alarm and uh, uh, our MRCC is a Marine Rescue Coordination Center said, oh, well, it's in the Dutch sector, but they are quite, uh, the Dutch Coast Guard is busy. The helicopters are already on a uh, on different job. So could you do this uh, rescue? And of course we can do that rescue. <laughs> Let's uh, go for it. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a long flight. Um, I don't know how many miles it was anymore, but we needed to add up fuel because we had up, uh, a quite a long journey to go. And we flew with our uh, uh, Dolphin, so the AS365, uh, and three. We had back then on scene. Wow. So uh, we flew out, took a long journey uh, over to the, yeah, to the location, and then uh, had to eyeball for the ship, of course. So uh, at the end, uh, eventually we found him because the weather was not so good. Okay. Uh, we had to go a little bit lower to, uh, to actually find the ship, but we, uh, we managed to find it. And uh, yeah, from there, we, uh, we started the hoisting. Um, yeah, when we went out, I was looking at the swell and I was like, oh, okay, this will be okay. It's not, not too bad. Okay. In the Dutch sector, we had like three meter waves. Three meter waves? Yeah, okay. It's not, so, it's not so bad. It's not, but, it's, it's still, sure. <laughs> it's 10 feet. It's three meters. It's, it's yeah, not and small. The, the, vessel, the vessel was 140 foot. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine then. Easy. That was, that was okay. So. <laughs> I, for the record, when you have three meter waves, usually the wind is kicking as well. I mean, come on, kicking. man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so for me, it was like, uh, oh, this will be all right. And then the, the door opens. I said, oh, this ship is bouncing. <laughs> oh, that's new for me. <laughs> so, oh. so that was quite, quite interesting. Um, um, yeah, sorry for the guys on the podcast, but for you, I have a picture here of the ship. Which were, uh, yeah. You see those guys standing here, and that's where we uh, took, took the spot. So starboard aft was. So uh, and that looks, spot. is that just a that's a that's the fishing vessel. You've got yeah. your your riggers out to the right and left. So there, the, and the only thing, the only spot that's open on the on that fishing vessel is the aft, the uh, the stern of the stern. Yeah, the stern. Stern of both. Yeah. yeah. So we had two spots. Uh, like you have options A, B, and C. And the first option was also the best option. So um, what happened? I have a little background of this story as well, because uh, I, I, the guy later uh, thanked me. 
on Facebook even. So that was, that was yes. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's, um, that's amazing. Yeah, I will tell you more about it later. Okay, okay. First, uh, what happened, the guy uh, uh, got stuck in a winch system on the ship with his, uh, with his hand. But he could retract his hand and his glove went into the winch, but he like he was happy to have his hand back uh, unshattered. Un <laughs> and at the same moment, he stepped into a loop of a cable. There was a loop on deck and he stepped with his foot into a loop. And then the fishing rig went down into the sea. So it, it tightened up the cable and it just ripped his foot off. So mid foot oh. ripped off. Yeah, that's what, what happened with the guy. So it was quite urgent. I have to say these guys on the ship did a magnificent, magnificent job. Sorry, sorry, rephrase. Magnificent, is it? A magnificent yes. job. Sorry. Magnificent <laughs> job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they did a good job on him. And um, so I, I got the uh, mercy position down. I mean, yeah, three meter waves, bouncing and rocky, but I, I was lucky. I timed it well. <laughs> so uh, uh, to, for, the, for the listeners, we have 150 foot uh, uh, per minute hoist. So it's really, really slow. Yeah, 150. Oh. That's that is slow. The yeah, average is, is about 250. I'm using about uh, 250, 250 feet per minute hoist currently. That's what I'm using. Like yeah, we have yeah. 150, 100 feet less, so 100, 150. Call so Breeze. Was, easy. Wait, who who's your hoist? Is it Goodrich or Breeze? It's Goodrich. Yeah. Yeah. Goodrich. Call him. Yeah. Get the updated one. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, we don't have an updated one for our helicopters. Oh, so we well, have for the N3, we have actually, but uh, uh, our entry will leave the service. So uh, they're looking for a seller and it will be sold any oh, anytime okay. soon, I hope. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> we have, uh, we fly normally with, uh, with the EC155. Yeah. B1 models. And they have only one hoist model with fits. Ah. And that's just that uh, same hoist. Yeah. yeah. So AKA super slow. Super slow. So you need to uh, work even harder. To get the yeah. guys uh, good on the ship, so um, I got the emergency physician. Uh, luckily, very uh, yeah, very good down on the deck. Uh, it was quite easy and straightforward. And then uh, the winds changed a little bit, and uh, I got the uh, the rescue swimmer deck and uh, out of uh, out of the cabin, hoisted down. I said, oh, "I'll go for the dynamic winds now because I see the boat is is turning a little bit, and we need to uh, we need to get them on the same spot as the emergency physician." So I uh, commenced a uh, um, dynamic hoist and then I boarded one because uh, he was went, went to the deck and he almost had an overshoot. So I, I board from here and go again. So yeah. we, we, went, uh, we went again and that went fine. He went on the deck and then uh, got the material down as well. Smart uh, move. Good yeah. move. Yeah, sometimes you need to say uh, abort or, or, or no even when it's, yeah. when it's too hard. So um, it worked out. We went to a platform to get refueled and then, uh, yeah, picked up the guys again. And I have to say credits for our guys because those guys uh, had to go from the stairs down and you go under the wheelhouse and that's where they yeah, covered up the guy. Hide. <laughs> They've hidden the, the, the patient like in a warm, warm area where yeah. they, could, uh, they could treat him. So he got the medicine. They, they wrapped up his foot, uh, uh, got the amputee as well with, with them. And, um, uh, Put them in the stretcher, but then they had to go up. That's really small stairs, right? Up, and and, and there was no room for for turning or uh, yeah to, to carry them actually. So they had to get inventions. They had to to look for a solution to get this guy up that little stairs. So what they did, they they had a rope on one end of the of the stretcher, and in the other end they could carry it. And with the rope, they reeled him in upstairs. Really? Was, yeah, because there was no room to, to maneuver, you know? Putting it so, like you're, you're almost tipping it on its side to slide up the small. Yeah, you had to go up the really small stairs. Like, and, 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 yeah. Jeez, oh, man. Really narrow stuff. Holy cow. Okay. But they did it. They did a really awesome job. And, and the guy was 130 kilos. That was also not, <laughs> it was quite heavy. <laughs> so uh, I'll give simple math. 100 kilos is 220 pounds. Add another 30 on top of that. You're like, ooh, -wee. boy, yeah. he's a big boy. <laughs> 290, I think. Eh? Yeah. It's yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Of course he is. Why would he be? That's what we have to go rescue. That's, Gosh. The, fishing guy. That's the real fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> so and imagine those, that, 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 that ship was rocking. So the guys were green. 
they were really green. They were like, mm, mm, I, I, <laughs> throwing up almost, you know. <laughs> oh, that used to it. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, it was, it was a pity for that guy, but for, for, for me, it was hilarious to see that my guys coming up really green faces. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been yeah, there too. Yeah. Get down yeah, on deck, yeah. like, oh I can God, imagine. get me in back in the helicopter, please. Oh, I, I'm yeah. not going to last long. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, so we did the material in shop to get the uh, rescue swimmer up first, so he can help me in the cabin. We check the okay. stretcher, and then uh, our emergency physician goes up with the stretcher, and then uh, with the high line as well. So they, they uh, managed to maneuver the high line as well a little bit. It was quite nice. Got the stretcher on board, uh, we checked high line, and went off to the hospital and uh, delivered him to Groningen because it was a Dutch guy. He went also to a Dutch hospital. as well. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. And the spot that you were putting these guys in and out of, and, and I'll tell you what, the picture will be posted on uh, Instagram. So, but it's, it's not very big. You're talking what three meters by three meters. If that, like that was the spot it might even be a little smaller. More or less. Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Because it, it was bigger, but it was a crane. It was in, in, right. in my way actually. And it could not turn it. I, we asked for it on the radio, but uh, it said that's not maneuverable. So you need to take it as it is. Yeah, they're in so, three uh, meter waves. They're not turning. They're they're going. They're, they're going to maintain their heading. Yeah, well, in the North Sea, you have like that that that, uh, that the wave system that like after the seventh wave, you have like a, a quiet part. Yeah, and then before it starts again. So uh, I was timing on that one. So uh, I mean, uh, all those guys who do sea pilot transfer or the guys who know uh, how the North Sea works, they all aim for that wave or try for that. To aim yeah, for that, yeah, in a little break. You yeah. get your couple swells and then you're low. And then you yeah, yeah, have a row, a row of swells and yeah. then you have a rest. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Danny, that's freaking sick, bro. I mean, if, awesome. if, if, if I would do this job now, I would say, oh, wow, this is okay. It's not, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, I mean, I'm, only, I'm a rookie. I'm, I'm a four years in this business and then I just started. So I was really new, really new. And then it was, oh, this is huge for me you know <laughs> <laughs> oh dude. yeah that good, was nice. good job uh, you and your whole crew i mean again i can't emphasize it enough this is a crew mentality but each individual has has this little piece that you gotta make happen and man you're pulling it off killer i love it yeah a credit to the pilot he had an amazing uh, hold on and a uh, good reference on the ship and uh, yeah it's really good well, you got to give good Connie. You got to give props. I'm giving you props right now. I got you here. I'm giving you props. Nice job, Danny. Come on. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> we, always, we always make a joke because the, the pilot monitoring sitting on the left, uh, in, our, in our case, then he, uh, he, he, gets always, he gets always the credits. Oh, man, you did so much good radio work. Perfect. <laughs> oh, that sounds like us here. I love it. <laughs> You're doing a great job over there, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I mean, across the whole team, I mean, they stabilized the guy and, and I've seen what our uh, emergency physicians and, and uh, rescue swimmers, because our rescue swimmers are ambulance uh, paramedics. Yeah. And what they can do is, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, those guys are capable of doing so much crazy stuff there, out there. I, really I can't believe you guys are sending down a full physician too. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We're yeah. capable of doing a lot like a man intubate persons on scene and uh, yeah. get them up uh, intubated even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I could do that now. Uh, when I was in the Coast Guard, not so much. It was uh, O2 and go. I'm just kidding, everybody. There's a little bit more to that, but that's what we would say. <laughs> Throw the O2 on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's take some videos of the Coast Guard. I mean, you, you guys are like stabilizing as much as you can on the ship or on a vessel and then get them out as yeah. quick as possible, right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's, let's yeah. load and go. Let's do, like, so, take the golden yeah. hour and then you're up. Yeah. yeah. Stabilize. I mean, I, everybody works on stabilize the patient first, but right after that, yeah, let, let's let's roll. Let's you know, yeah, we're burning, we're burning fuel, and the helicopter <laughs> only has so much, so it's time, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, but you are, you are, and, 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 and I mean, the Coast Guard is even also flying with the with the dolphins. Yeah, I mean, so you always are uh, have problems with power settings maybe as well, and, and, yep. and yep, commencing yep. Ho high high hoists because of that, and yeah. High hoist power, uh, your fuel, everything, every weight. It's, yeah, there's a lot of things coming into factor. I I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's a nice platform. I, I prefer a little bit bigger of a helicopter. I like the H60. 
Yeah, I like the awesome. 139. I like the 225. You know, I like the S92. Like bigger aircraft. Yeah, give me some power, some room. I like it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, the S92. That's amazing. Amazing yeah. helicopter. I, yep. I've, saw, I've seen once uh, an uh, S92 up close. I said, "Wow, this is just a bus. This is whoa. This is so big. Unbelievable." <laughs> And, and I mean, I've, I was used to flying 135s with HCM when we yep. did the wind farm operations. Flying out of a 135, it's so Tiny. small. Yeah. It's like a bumblebee in the air. <laughs> it totally <Yeah>. is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, made, I, I made the step up to a 145, also with HCM. Yeah. And that, for me, was huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the 145 is not like... The, a whole lot bigger but it's bigger than the 135 like come on yeah the cabin <laughs> cabin space is, 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 is nice <laughs> oh yeah danny so you got uh so now you get done your your kind of first or you're not first dude this is like a a gnarly little winch case and you're like wow legit yeah so you, you you got more you you just keep going you're like a star magnet right now for all this stuff <laughs> Well, I wouldn't call it that. I mean, we are, we are backups, are. So how is uh, arranged in Germany? They have a search and rescue in the still. They're flying the old Seeking um, still, but they're transferring to NS90. And I will uh, do the rescues with that. Uh, but we're helping them out because we have the emergency on, uh, on shift. We are in the air in 15 minutes. Wow. And Yeah, it's quite fast. And um, that's on one base. And on the other base, we also have 20. And we are in the air. Uh, so our, our the times we need to need to score is 15 minutes in daytime and 30 minutes in nighttime. Yeah, always in in uh, within those times in the air with an emergency position, and it gives us so many um, yeah capabilities. But because in Germany it's it's arranged like uh, you need to have uh, with every rescue even on the rescue cars there's an emergency position, mostly in most cases. Okay. And I don't know how it's uh, arranged in America or somewhere else, but in Holland, it's like we have uh, really good uh, paramedics on the ambulance. They can uh, arrange the stuff themselves. And when it's really urgent or they need a physician, they fly them in, okay. like on a Hems helicopter. But uh, in Germany, the physicians are mostly already on scene. Every helicopter needs to have them. Yeah. So w the way like I was set up with the Coast Guard was a little bit different. Um, we would have... Like you'd have your, your standard crew, your two pilots, your hoist operator, and then your rescue swimmer. And your rescue swimmer is trained as EMT basic. And yeah. then on occasion, we would take either uh, a, like a, a health services technician, HS, which is kind of their, 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 their knowledge of medicine is a little bit higher than ours. Yeah. Um, and then after that, they would take a flight surgeon or the doc. But the doc has got to be somewhat close, you know, in order to go. So... Sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, credits to all our uh, paramedics because they are so highly skilled. Yeah. So highly skilled. I mean, on, on, I think on 50% of the cases, they could do it themselves. Wow. Or on the other cases, they, they need the uh, physician as well for, for signing stuff and, and yeah. for, for medication stuff. So uh, it's a great team, I would say. They work together quite good. Uh, they train in the pool. We also do height rescues for the wind farms. So they trained in uh, uh, rescued height. Wow. So like high uh, ropes? High ropes, yeah. Cool. Excellent Very ropes, cool. Yeah, they do, uh, they do a lot of those uh, technical stuff as well. So we are capable of doing uh, quite some stuff. Even the specialty uh, uh, what we have um, on those wind farms, if we could not hoist them on top, if it would not be sufficient to hoist them on top, we can also go to I mean, the lower piece of the wind, windmill. Yeah, the very the, so the bottom of the... Yeah. basically the base of the wind farm itself yeah so you have those the, you have the, the foundation of the wind come close of course of, with the blades it's, it's an obstruction of course so we need to yeah. get the cable somehow on the transition piece for that we have a highline gun or tp gun yeah. <laughs> you have a highline yeah. gun <laughs> yeah we have a like we have that, that, that uh, a gun uh, i think simon already talked about it this is like that that uh, yeah, no he was, well, he was talking about using. I, if I remember correctly, he was talking about you potentially using one, and it was like, ah, uh, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> used it. We we had like uh, it, it's so it's a probe. It's connected to our highline. It's a CO two gun. Okay. Uh, we have a complete procedure written for it. 
So it's all safe. Um, probe on the TP, it can shoot 20 meters like an horizontal line. Wow. Even with, even with wind. So it's, uh, it's quite nice. And then you, you shoot the probe on, on the TP and all in this, this high line. So while we climb and make the angle smaller, yep. like they haul in the, uh, the, the medic. So we winch down the medic on his, uh, when he's on height. Okay. And then they haul him in and we climb. So uh, while winching down, we climb and then they haul him in. That's oh, how yeah. we do it. You, you got to yeah. send me a video of that. I want to see that. Come on. Yeah, I, th I think we actually have some. Oh, uh, okay. Come back to that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're quite capable of, of doing things. I mean, we're, we're specialized in, in wind farm uh, uh, hems operation. So that's what we need to do as well. Yeah. Got to yeah. get it done. Got to get it done. Yeah, that's it. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm ready for your next story, man. Come on, because I, I know you, I know you're not done. So I'm just I'm chopping at the bit right now. I know I have a little silence in between. I see you jumping off the stairs already. <laughs> like I don't I don't want this to end. Keep it going. <laughs> All right. So um, second job. Um, uh, well, no, it's not even second job. A couple of jobs in between. But then this one is quite interesting to talk about because it almost went wrong from our side. Um, so I show you a picture. Sorry for the guys in the podcast or again, but uh, they whatever already... they're all going to be posted on Instagram as soon as you so, send them to me. So get the I, word out. You'll be on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> so everybody go to Instagram. All right, a real rescue Instagram, and just be like, click on each picture, and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And I'll make sure I put them in. So order. we have. I'm that kind of guy. This, this ship. Yeah, look at that tight. It's it's a it's a crab troll. It's rigging everywhere. Shit sucks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 40 feet. Um, and it is no place to hoist on, actually. It's it's quite harsh. But uh, so we got scrambled. Um, the background of the story can already tell because I, uh, I found out what, what happened. Um, there are two guys on this little ship. They're patrolling like the coast for uh, shrimps, the shrimp trawler or crabs. They also got. And um, there are two guys, and in this case, it was a uh, grandfather with his grandson. Ooh. And they like to have like so one is steering and the other one's sleeping. And when they get in the nets, they work together. Um, the grandson was sleeping, and normally he gets wakened by an alarm. And it's, it's what's a ship, you know? Uh, yep. So they have to, uh, the, the other one goes to sleep, and the other one takes over the wheel, or, or they have to. Call in the get in the nets, um, but the alarm didn't went off, so he went uh, went awake and said, huh, "This is not correct. Something is wrong." So he went into the wheelhouse, and that's where his grandfather was hanging over the steering wheel. Oh no! Okay, he had a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, he had so a heart attack called, right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he uh, called the MRCC and they scrambled the lifeboats. Um, uh, they called Daygate ZRS in in Germany. That's the lifeboat organization uh, which goes out then, and um, and us. But we were so close by; it was actually in front of our ghost line. Okay. So we were there in in like seven minutes. We were on scene. Oh wow! Really oh, that's job. great. Seven yeah. minutes to be on scene. Um, yeah. Yes, please. I'll take uh, that yeah, I mean, any day. Uh, from flying, yeah. So we were uh, in the air in ten minutes, maybe a little bit before that, and seven minutes, and uh, it was really quick. Yeah beautiful yeah but it was beautiful weather it was a sunny day it was in the summer so uh yeah what can go wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh oh there's oh, there's the uh there's that four-year mentality what can go wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah just started so um uh, <laughs> what happened was uh come on danny that's we love right there i got love for you <laughs> And we were circling around the ship and we said, okay, we need a plan A, B, and C to get these guys down because it will be really harsh. So um, I found a spot also on the off deck and we said to the guy, well, you need to steer into wind. And then we can get those guys. Uh, well, you saw, you've seen the little pipes. Yes. I mean, those, those, those pipes and we, have, we, can, we can send them down in between there. There's enough space to get them there and then, uh, yeah, get, get that going. Um, so he, he did it. And uh, what we didn't knew was that there was an extra guy on the ship because he stepped over. In the meantime, we uh, were fly flying there. He stepped over from another fishing vessel to assist. Okay. That is actually quite good because he was steering and the other guy was performing CPR. Oh, wow. And okay. 
And for the record, I mean, this guy was 18 years old performing CPR on his grandfather. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When you think yeah, about that, put that in perspective for a minute, like 18 years old. Like I remember when I was 18, I, I didn't, man, I was a knucklehead. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but yeah. now, well, and now you're performing a emerge, you know, CPR on your grandfather, your family. Good Lord. Yes. Yeah. That's not a good and organizing. I mean, I mean, he has to call the MRCC. He has to call with the other fishing uh, vessels as well. Yeah. Uh, and steering as well. So uh, coping wow. with everything. This is, this was a, wow. Yeah. Respect to this guy. I mean, he yeah, must have been through a really hard time after that. So, oh, I have no doubt. Yeah. 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 So we're really eager to go out there. Uh, even if it was dangerous, we said, okay, uh, the weather is so good that we can give it a try. So we did a dummy deck, went over the scene, said, ah, we have a good hold here. Was doing an amazing job on, on holding the helicopter at that spot. So Okay, we can give it a go. So got the uh, rescue swimmer, or as we call it, paramedic on the line. Uh, went, uh, put him down, and performed the dynamic winch into that spot. And straight down I had him, in between, clicked off, and went down. And I said, <laughs> no, no, you need to stay there. I want to have a high line for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but but, but we, had, we didn't have accidents or polygons at that, that time, so we worked with the marine radio head. But somehow that blocked, so he could not, could not hear us. So, so okay, well, we go, uh, we go back, back and left, and we're gonna just hoist it down as well on the same. So, so uh, I, real quick, it, so you just said you didn't have um, Polycom or, or the access system, radio. and that no, right. Not, so, if you know, for those agencies out there that don't have this and you don't know what we're talking about, it's, it's a wireless ICS system, and if the rescueman has it on he's still connected to ics up in the aircraft even on deck so you can literally have a conversation with the guy and be like hey bro where are you going i need you to connect to the tagline of the high line or okay no i don't need you walk away you know like it's a it's a conversation it is amazing it's like ah uh, it's highly recommended for anybody anyway total yeah. side note do so it so we had we had the marine radio we called it but he could not reach us somehow but it was my fault because in my deck brief I, had, I did not say it. So stay there. I would like to give you the high line and, and, and go from there. So it was actually my fault. I said, well, let's go from here. We just get you down on the same spot. And that was the emergency physician. And then we go from there. Extreme so, ownership. Well yeah. done, sir. Own it. Own the mistake and move <laughs> yeah, on. It was mine. It was mine. Come mistake. on. Oh, Danny, I like you that much more. Look at this. <laughs> so, uh, <yeah. laughs> so we went, we, we sent out the emergency physician and, uh, Whilst we were doing that, the guy from the wheelhouse came in and out. So we were steering and not steering to look at the helicopter. So what are we doing? So we went on the radio and say, stay, uh, stay on the wheel. We need you to, to maintain this course. Yeah. So he, uh, he went inside again. It's okay. Now we can proceed. The, the wind, um, sorry, the emergency physician was already on, on height. On the, uh, hoist him in. And then uh, we went so like forward and right position. And then the ship went to a hard left. So all of a sudden you have an, uh, you have, uh, well, the elevation is, is, is quicker. So of course he was uh, entangled almost in, in, into the rigging, into the lines in a split second. Holy because the ship went to the left, we went to the right. I mean, yeah, we were on collision course and he was not on the right track anymore. So uh, that's why the emergency physician got actually kind of stuck in, tin, in between the lines and the So I said, aboard hoist. I'm going to get him out of here. So I, I w winched in again. And then I noticed he was like in between the lines. So if I would hoist up, then I would pull him through the lines. Holy with smoke. All, with all the shit. So I said, steady, stay, stay here. I tried to sort this out now. So I, I kept on talking to the pilot what was, what was happening. And I was lowering him a little bit down, uh, which he was giving the hand signals to get him down. And um, the antennae where he was holding on broke. Oh. So I had a little bit of wire left. I had a little bit of slack, not too much, because I winched in before. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned the hoist is not too quick, <laughs> which <laughs> saved me a little bit because the slack was not too bad. But then he fell a little bit down, you know, in, into, the, into the cable. So, so you, you got, got a, a shock load in the cable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you got a shock load in the cable. But it was only a couple of centimeters. Okay. Not much. So that was our safe. Yeah, that was our, uh, how do you say it? No, you, it good you, for us, I would say. Yeah. 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 So... He said, okay, get me down, get me down. So I, I maneuvered the helicopter a little bit in, in, in between those lines. 
Yeah. And that's where, where the cable was free. And then I put him on the deck. And that's where he slipped as well. So he fell down. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all, all, all in all, was, was quite a shitty. And he got off the hook and he said, get away with this thing. <laughs> 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 He's kind of done with it. Yeah. So uh, I got up the hook and uh, we went on the radio for the emergency position. He could reach. We said, okay, but what we're going to do now is go to the next airfield and going to check the cable because we only have one hoist. Uh, we don't have a double hoist system, so I, I, so I need to check the cable before we do anything further. Smart. Super so smart. Need, yeah, so they needed the time, and um, the lifeboat was almost on scene as well. So what we said, okay, get those guys, put the patient on your, uh, on your lifeboat where we have a much better spot to hoist on, and then we hoist them off. So you get them off the lifeboat versus the boat that they're on. Yeah, well, we, right. we were, and then the, the lifeboat was saying, oh, we are so close to shore, we just go into shore. So that oh. was uh, even better. So we checked the cable. Nothing was uh, was broken, no broken strands. Uh, or the cable was just fine. The, the hook was fine. Uh, Road was running out. We reeled out, checked the length of what we used, and it was all fine. So I was really happy with that. So, uh, yeah, we can uh, we can go forward from the from this point. But they sailed into harbor. So we uh, got uh, we got them from there. We just landed on and uh, got them there. And, and unfortunately, the guy has passed away. Ah, uh, it's too bad. Yeah. yeah. And he said, actually, he passed away already when he was still in, in, in the wheelhouse, when, when the grandson found him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. What a story, though. Holy smoke. Yeah. Like, uh, so you, you guys are, I'm, I'm going to call it not so much lucky. That's, that's a lot of skill that's involved in, in the entire hoist process there. I mean, when you have, when you have mistakes and stuff or, or things that not mistakes, that was a poor choice of words. When you have um, things or events that come up and you have to adapt and overcome, it's quick thinking. You have to make a decision and do it right away. So I yeah. think you guys did an amazing job. That's awesome. Yeah. We had a big learning point because the guy went in and out the wheeling house, as I mentioned before, Yeah, uh, that should, should have been a trigger to not, maybe not to hoist this guy down. Yeah, because he was not st- so. Uh, we did a good debrief on that, make the safety report on it. I said, "Hey, one when this same case happens again, we are not hoisting." Yeah. First, the ship needs to have a steady course, and then we can maintain this hoist. Yeah. yeah. You know, another like kind of, and I I don't want to. Uh, I'm going to call it Monday morning quarterback it or or rehash it, but it, it maybe. Could you have lowered down a tagline? Could you have gotten, you know, after your rescue swimmer or your paramedic went into the wheelhouse, radioed him, say, hey, go back to the back. Go back to the aft part of the ship, and I'm going to send you a tagline down and then send in your, your doc. Could that have, okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand your question. So we did. I uh, went on the radio from Vessel, but the guy was more in out of the cabin than inside and staring and not staring. And it was like a, it was a deckhand of the other ship. Oh, gotcha. So he didn't get the radio. He didn't so he never it. even heard the radio call. Got he, it. He heard it, oh. but he didn't react to it. Got it. Okay. So yeah, you you guys were kind of hosed on that, and you adapt and overcome. Sounds like yeah. that's what you did. We're like kind of stuck in 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 this uh, yeah, in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, we had a good debrief and emergency physician. He was not even bruised. He's always so he was just very lucky that the good. cable was not too loose. There's yeah. not too many slack in. We broke an antennae of the ship. That was actually the downside of it, but uh, we we made it safely, yeah. and we learned a lot from it. Wow! And now I would do it. I would have done it different. With the how would you have done it now? I would just aborted it because the guy went in and out of the wheel. I would just think, okay, now we're not doing it. Yeah, going in and out of the I wheelhouse, mean, you don't like. Hey, I mean, yeah, a big ship. Hit, a big ship. When you when you turn the wheel of a big ship, it takes time to move. Right. But you know, this was a forty foot trawler. With one side the nets up and the other side not so it was even dragging on the left side and when, when he gives a, a full left immediately reacts you know it's a small ship so yeah. yeah that's what i learned from it yeah abort the whole thing yeah yeah sometimes you need to say no as well yeah the, the true job. statement yeah yeah don't don't get forced into something don't get don't get the pressure i mean the, yeah the lifeboat was almost unseen yeah. Back there. I mean, it's a, it's a, a reanimation, so you need to. We want to go quick, of course, but we already had the paramedic uh, on 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 the guy as well. Yeah. And he is capable of doing stuff. He's really capable of doing stuff. So that was our learning point from there. What a great That's learning curve! Mind. Yeah. 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 Danny, well done. Well <laughs> done. 
Yeah. I, I love the debrief that you talk about at the end of it. I, I'm all about a debrief. Um, yeah. And again, props to you for owning that, you know, owning the mistake that you made, you know, like, Hey, that was my fault. Like I, I try to do that myself. It's hard to do. And a lot of people have a really hard time with that, with that ownership part of it and say, you know what? I messed up my bad and I'm going to work harder next time. So props to you. Yeah. That's well done, sir. For sure. I think that's how it should be, in, in, especially in this this type of operation. That 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 you should reflect on your uh, own handling, yeah, and on the others, yeah, and uh, talk about it. You know, get better. Totally agree. That's, yeah, that's why I like this podcast because um, a lot of guys on your podcast talk about the the really good spot, but also the the minor missions and stuff, and but where where we could learn from. I yeah. think uh, also for the younger guys out there. Which I'm also one of them. I'm a rookie. <laughs> I mean, a rookie with experience like right I, now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, guys like me. I mean, we can learn from podcasts like this and going to the Eurasia meetings and talk with each other is, is the best thing. Yeah. I have not been to a meeting yet. Uh, I'm really looking forward to go. To, uh, I hope. Uh, oh, I let's it. make it happen. Come on, yes. Ben. Make it happen. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Risto, it. Risto, come on. Yes. I'm calling you guys out. Let's make this happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, open, the, I mean, uh, open this country. Open all the countries back up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the COVID situation looks more or less stable now, uh, at, at least in Holland. Yeah. So everything opens up again a little bit. So I have good hope for it. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great yeah. if it happens. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be. I will be there. So, hey, we'll get to hang out if you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nice all right yeah cool so uh yeah that was that one uh learned a lot beautiful i i thank you for everything about that too even the debrief like again i i love doing a debrief highly recommend it for everybody out there even if it's everything goes right just talk about it make sure yes. hey could we have done anything better yeah or no I, it went smooth and i would do the exact same thing over or whatever so yeah, even even debriefing, you can learn from debriefing itself. So uh, we had really long debriefs before, and then we said, okay, we need to change that as well. So uh, our captain on the ship said, okay, we do it differently now. So we do it CRM wise. So, okay, how are we going to do it? Okay, you, bad points and good points. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the point. Let's roll. Get, give me the good points first, and then go to the bad points and we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it. Yes. So uh, after every flight, which even if when we do a, a static hoist on the field with a new paramedic or a new emergency physician or a new hoist operator, it doesn't matter. We do a debrief. It doesn't matter what we do. We Great. Do debrief. Yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. Yeah. So from there, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the kite server story, I think. Eh? Kite surfers. Kite server story. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys are out having some fun, catching a little wind, and... Yeah, what happened? Mayday. So they, yeah, <laughs> they had like uh, inland wind, and uh, there was a boy, a boy and a girl were, were kite surfing there. They were on holiday, and she said, uh, "Oh, they were kite surfing actually the whole day, and then they went out for dinner in the evening. It was in the summer, and um, after the dinner, she said, ah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like to go for another round. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I talked with her, so I know the background of the story. Uh, oh, all right, I like yeah. this too." I like yeah. having the background. This is why I talk to you yes. guys. Yes, I yes, want nice. the details. <laughs> I want the backstory. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as we, uh, she went out, but the wind changed. It went like uh, from inland to out, outland, coasting out. Yeah. So, oh, out, out, uh, outshore or offshore. Offshore, yeah. So she was like uh, trapped a little bit and, and surprised by that. She was like uh, a yeah, beginner kite server, I think. Well, not that experienced back then and uh she was surprised by it the, the wind picked up and offshore so she went out and uh, her boyfriend said, oh that's not good my, <laughs> girl, my, <laughs> my girlfriend leaves she, she might head <laughs> off to england <laughs> and then i don't know have a girlfriend yeah. oh, <laughs> damn it <laughs> hey, i need to go after her so he, he got the kids this from is his, not from the way i want to break up honey i mean she <laughs> left the wedding ring oh shit <laughs> <laughs> he was up, uh, so uh, blowing out, and um, and and the guy was like, "Oh, can I use your kit?" They were like, they had two kids with three persons. I said, "Can you use your kit because I need to go after her." And you call the emergency uh, service. So he went after. He was a little bit more experienced. He, he, they cut stop, 
and then uh, he got also trapped. I mean, in uh, in Germany and Holland as well, they have those sandbanks, so no shallow waters and stuff. But okay. from the water, you don't see it. You don't see you don't see it. And and they they were like they had the feeling that they were really far offshore. They were actually not that far offshore, but from the water, you don't see that. You don't see the shore anymore at, at one point. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And at that point, it was getting a little bit dark already. And uh, for the guys out there, we are limited, SAR. So we are not capable of doing water rescue at night because we don't have the auto hover uh, equipment on, on board. And um, that's why we were, the clock was ticking. It was getting dark and we need to get them uh, airlifted uh, and found <laughs> before yeah. it was, was getting dark. Yeah, yeah. So um, we went out. We were, it was close to uh, where we were as, as well, five minutes, I think, flying-wise. Nice. That was really, really clear. That was good. And we saw the uh, emergency service, so lifeguards, uh, lifeboat organization, were all uh, doing the search patterns. Uh, and I talk about, uh, they had like jet skis, they had like hoovercrafts even, to go over those sandbanks, you know, and water, you know, that yeah. was really cool, that, 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 the equipment they have. And, and the boats, a little bit more, of course. And, and, and us, overhead. So everyone doing, uh, doing the search, I, I think we were doing um, extended square search. Okay, expand the square. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we were we were busy with, and uh, we didn't find anything. And uh, oh, uh, sorry, we, we found the kite right away. All right, that was 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 easily to spot. And you have the trapeze that like the handlebar of the kite. Yep, it was a little bit underwater, and there was something on that handlebar. So like, oh man, that doesn't look good. But you have to check it out. So I, I lowered the winchman down, or we say the medic. I lowered him down, and he checked it out, and there was nothing on the end of that. That thing, and it was. We were really happy about that. We didn't yeah. find found the body, of course. So uh, we left the kite for what was uh, marked it, and then the lifeboat organization picked it up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So and then uh, we went uh, back to our shirts, and the pilot we didn't find anything. So the pilot said, "Well, let's try some different course." I have the feeling they could be uh, more uh, in the right corner or something like that. He said. So we went. Uh, we we talked about it over the radio, and and we got that. Uh, we said we're going that course to, to check out there. Yeah, let's do it. And we went there and, and the, the emergency physician saw them and they had black wetsuits and it was getting dark. So it was like really wow. hard to spot them. Like needle in a haystack. And for really? everybody that does not understand, trying to find somebody in the middle of the ocean is like trying to, like you're looking for a basketball, like the in just floating in the water. It is not, it's not easy to, to do. So yeah, and they did the lights. They didn't. They didn't have anything on them. I mean, they, they no PLBs, of course, but there also no lights, no phones with lights. Yeah, they, they had nothing. So all black wetsuits and and waving. And in the end, the emergency physician from the left door, which was open, uh, could see them. So uh, yeah, he, he got them inside. We lined up for a water rescue, and then we um, got first the woman out. We hoisted her out, and and that was kind of amazing hoist for me because it was straightforward water rescue yeah as we were trained to do uh but when i got her up and put her back into the cabin i never have seen someone looking at me like that so <laughs> really frightened but also really happy some, yeah. some something like that i never seen i was really crazy so, so we got her back in in the cabin and immediately below us was an, a jet ski of the lifeguard guys and he got the guy on the yeah they have the backboard on the on the jet ski you can yep. hang on yeah and and uh, it was really close to shore so he got him back and then we dropped him on the beach and they uh, they didn't uh, yeah they checked him up in the in the ambulance and uh, well they weren't even hypothermic because it was summer it was was quite good so uh, we checked him up all fine but uh, emotionally and mentally it was just a big wow, big blast for him for them I would say wow wow. Yeah. So yeah. question, um, when you were deploying your rescue swimmer, uh, yeah. your medic, yeah. I do, I'm going to assume that they stay connected to the hoist hook. Yes. We, we don't do, uh, the, like the, I think the U S coast guard used that yeah, free, free swim, free yeah. swim. Yeah. yeah so, I, I mean, I mean, we are doing it. I mean, we have a helicopter. We can also fly towards the, the victim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we, we do that as well. And I'm, I love that method. It's a direct deployment is what I refer yeah. to it as well, but you're lowering down, you stay connected to the hoist hook, get right up to yeah, the victim. 
quick what strap. We do is you just get them. We do it like, like we did a, a trawl. I get them with the knees until the knees into the water, so they can steer a little bit. Yeah. And to do it, do a trawl when the swell is not too big, you can do it. And we trawl towards the uh, oh the, the victim in the water, drop yep. him and go uh, winch out full speed and go back and left, so they are out of the rotor was and he can work with the with the face. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that method as well. It, so you can so you have the the cantonary method is what you're referring to. And the cantonary method is when you have that slack in the cable and they're just outside the rotor wash. So now your, your rescue swimmer can work with the victim patient, uh, putting the quick strap on or getting whatever device on them and then ready for pickup. You guys roll back over the top and boop, pluck us right out. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You, cantonary you method. Cantonary? Yeah, cantonary. cantonary. So that's, cantonary that's is, it. yeah, the, the, or the term cantonary is like bridge like when you have your arc, your cables on your bridge and they're, they're just, they're long and drooped and they look like a big smile. Yeah. That's the kit. Yeah. What we, what we, we put, we, yeah, the, we call it also direct deployment. So yeah. we, we deploy them at the, uh, at, at the victim and, and they, uh, they're working with it. So I had a double sling. Yeah. Put oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, what he would do is put the hook under his right armpit or his left, what, what he would like. And then uh, it's like he has the hook control. So he, every time he knows where the hook is. Yeah, when he's right. working with with the patient and the equipment, he he the hook under his, his arm, so he can he can tighten that up. He's not losing the hook right. because the hook would sink down. And you have to stat. We we use a static line in the water, not to get shocked. I mean, a lot yeah. of services not maybe not used with water. Fifty fifty. I use yeah. it sometimes. Well, we we use it, and and uh, so he only has to think about that. That's not getting entangled. Yeah. But for the rest, he has the hook control. Puts on the double strop. And then uh, added to that out. Yeah. Yeah. Double strap, one ch- one part around the yeah. chest, the other one yeah. underneath one the knees. knees. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. I yeah. Mean, we were not. We were not exactly. It was summer. We didn't know how long they were in the water. And then the water, when you're stationary in the water, you get cold. Yeah. Cold. So uh, that's why we use the double strap. So <laughs> so we got uh, got them rescued, and uh, yeah, for us it was uh, it was a nice rescue. Everything went fine. Uh, people all happy, and uh, not long after we uh, we got a letter. Of this woman, self wrote. So yeah. normally you get a typed type yeah. message or something, but we got a really uh, written letter in German. Uh, uh, how many uh, mentally impact this this rescue had on her? Uh, which well, eh, where I saw, uh, could, I could look in her eyes what was was doing to her, how frightened she was, uh, but how happy at the same moment. And wow. she described it in a whole big letter with a box of of chocolates and everything, <laughs> sweets and everything in it for us for the crew. How happy she was. And um, to get over it, she, she visited us on the base. I was not there. It was a different crew. But she actually visited the base to get, to get over the progress. And she's still dealing with it. She's still wow. struggling with it. Wow. Yeah. Because she, she knew if we would not have found her, and the other guys as well would not have found them, then, then yeah, it would, would have ended up differently. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, rescue wise, uh, hoisting wise, it was not special at all, but it was, uh, f- I mean, for them mentally, it was really a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you saved their life, bro. Like yeah. you and your crew <laughs> saved their life. They, yeah. Hands down. <laughs> if the doc didn't see him. That's it. If he didn't see him, we would have just flown past him yeah. and, and maybe wouldn't, would not catch him again. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, as I told, it was limited, Sar. We were on the clock. It was getting dark. Yeah. And uh, when it, when it's hazy already, you know, hazy yeah. above the sea, in um, not not so many daylight anymore. It's a needle, uh, as you said, a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Really <laughs> extraordinary. And it, and really it would nice have turned into like the next day. You would have been searching all the next day, and the Lord knows how far they would have gone, or if they yeah. would have survived the night. Yes. Or walked up the beach because it was pretty much next to them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, i mean they were they, they were holding on their uh kite boards and they were at the deep end but they were like in between those sand plates like yeah. there's a lot of sand banks and they were in between so the next morning the tide would have been different so they maybe they could have right. walked off wow but, but you never know you never know no you what i do know is you saved them what's yeah. up it was quite a strong current and that was what frightened us, uh, them as well wow so yeah, they could not get up the kites. I mean, the, the, it was offshore winds. And I think he would have been capable of, of going back on that moment. But yeah. she was not experienced yet. So he could not save them both. So he just stayed with her. It was, was, was whoa. Wow. Yeah. 
Good for him. Story. Hey, good for him. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, I think, they're, still, they think they're still together now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Good for them. That's that's awesome, Danny. That's amazing. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. You and your crew. Yeah, it's nice. We do, we do a wind farm. Uh, we have contracts with the wind farm, so we do wind farm operations. But we get those coast guard jobs in between as well, and I uh, I really like that. So we do med effects, those rescues would be as as told about, and and that makes it fun for us as well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Ah, oh, Danny, I can't <laughs> thank you enough for sharing these stories. It's freaking awesome. So now, um, with these stories that you've shared, like you have four years of experience doing this. You've got some great cases right now. And, and you've like, I know guys that have flown in the coast Guard that, that haven't seen this many and they did 10 years or 15 years and they, they don't have stuff like this. Yeah. Like you've got some, you've got some stuff, some, some cases under your belt that you can say, yeah, I've got experience. And yeah. This is why. So yeah. And I just grabbed some of them, you know, I have more, but I just grabbed some of the, of the nice stories. Uh, yeah. Well, kick some advice out there for, for all those young guys that are out there. And, and I, some, me too. I'll take some advice. Like, what would you tell everybody out there? Oh, uh, yeah. As a rookie, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just, just, just uh, listen carefully to your instructors and, 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 and suck it in. Suck all the information in and, and do something with it. And learn from mistakes and learn from different guys as well. Uh, but listen to this podcast at first. Well, thank you. It's yeah. a great podcast. Hey. Uh, yeah, it, uh, credits to you, uh, Jason. I thank mean, you. we can learn from each other. Uh, uh, yeah, learn from uh, mistakes, uh, but also talk about the good thing, what went good. And yeah, and, uh, yeah go from there. I talk like that. about it. Easy. Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep it uh, simple. Yes, yeah. as simple as possible. I, I'm all about talking about it. It's, again, why I, I love doing this. One, I love the stories. Like I really, I get into them. I, all these emotions are real. I kid you not. Like, I love talking about this stuff. I love listening to what other people are doing around the world. And, you know, I mean, four years in and you're talking about going into tight spots on the back of, you know, fishing vessels and going out to find people in the water that get sucked out by windsurfing. I mean, you don't make this stuff up. It happens and it happens a lot. And the fact that we get to talk about it is I I'm stoked. So thank you for sharing it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's, yeah. I mean, as I said, it's a great podcast, uh, which we can not only listen to, but also learn from it. Yeah. So uh, that's why I like it really. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. Yeah. hosting it. Yeah. Hey, nice. <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Danny, I, uh, I really hope that everything works out with Eurosa and the meeting, uh, which should, uh, last time I checked, it was October. That's the tentative date. So uh, yeah. everybody else, keep an eye out for that. But um, Danny, thank you so much for coming on, sharing the stories, experience, the ups, downs. And yeah, man, this is this is a blast for me. I appreciate it. So don't send the <laughs> pictures so I can post them. That way everybody can see what you're talking about with all these ships you're going to. All right. I will. I will post them. Yeah, I will send them directly to you. <laughs> Thanks, man. And when I'm in Holland, I'll give you a call. Yeah, I got to check yeah. that country off my list. So come on. <laughs> <laughs> like the people say, I, I went to Amsterdam. Oh, this in Holland. Oh, Holland lives, uh, lays in Amsterdam, right? That's, <laughs> that's the other way around. Huh? <laughs> Holland and Amsterdam is the capital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyway. All right, brother. Well, I'll catch you later. Again, thank you so much for coming on and sharing the stories, man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. And uh anytime and with that ladies and gentlemen we are out of here thank you for tuning in we hope you enjoyed this episode of the real rescue podcast please take a minute to like subscribe and hit that share button i'm pulling jocks and taking off but before i go if anyone out there has a rescue story they would be willing to share i would be humbled and honored to have you on as a guest or if you have any questions about rescue or anything else we talk about here, send an email to jason at therealrescue.com. That's jason at T-H-E-R-E-A-L-R-E-S-Q.com. You can also check us out on our web pages, therealrescue.com, our Facebook page, 
and our Instagram page at The Real Rescue. Again, a special thank you to all of you standing on the watch today. Always remember, when that star alarm goes off, those in distress are praying for a miracle. They are going to get you. Until next time, fly safe and swim hard.